Well, that's perfect timing. <laughs> <laughs> we just paused. There wasn't a total glitch in the matrix and everything got screwed up. This is the same video, we promise. Well, you're doing a convincing job of making them believe that. <laughs> I don't know where I am! Being... It really is a glitch in the Matrix! Whoa! Alright, well. Pretty sure I ended up capping one of those little, uh. Yeah, who cares? Other. Diga. Uh, whatever. <laughs> Digas. Uh, so news. <gasps> I wanted news? to go back to that. Yeah. I don't like news. News makes me mad most of these days. It's not political news. Oh, I don't care. News of any kind makes me mad. You just don't want to hear about life. I'll tell you what I don't want to hear your about. Friends, your friends Disney, have news. Disney does this thing where they completely wipe out, you know, the, the proper Star Wars stories. They kill off Luke Skywalker. They destroy all of the books that were like, this is how the Jedi Order gets rebuilt. They kill off all that, and they make a bunch of movies that suck. And then they come back and have the sheer brass to tell us we're going to make a movie in which all of that stuff that happens in the books, that still happens, but now our characters do it. And I'm like, that is just a slap with a fistful of excrement. To be like, yeah, we're going to make the stuff that we removed. Yeah, that's all going to happen, but it's going to happen with our characters. Because it can't happen with the characters you liked. Because we're a bunch of raging nonces. <laughs> I know that's not at all relevant to the thing, but I'm, I don't care if it's spurious. I'm venting. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so this is why I don't like news. It doesn't have to be political for me to not like it. Are you feeling better now, though? Or are you, not really. You still need some, some time to talk about If your... I could take a steaming dump on Mickey Mouse, I'd feel better. <laughs> <laughs> then I might feel okay. <laughs> I think that... Disneyland would disapprove of your. <laughs> I'm my, hey, I bought a ticket. I'm here, I'm here legally. I'm allowed to do this. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you get kicked out like forever. <laughs> well, would that be bad? <laughs> I mean, like, would that not just be sort of a medicine? To be like, now I couldn't even falter if I tried. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, uh, so news. Uh, Off the subject of, a bit of a, feces and I Mickey got Mouse. An idea. Let's change the subject. A bit of a historicity uh, of um, World War One and. Oh, okay, the, we're going. How is this news? If it's that it's old, it's news because. Uh, of a recent event that happened in my life. Because I said, so. because I say so. <laughs> yes. Um, so I was doing a bit of uh, poking around at... Uh, Mickey the, Mouse. <laughs> yes, I was poking Mickey Mouse. Uh, Seeing where best to lay my deuce. <laughs> uh, and I decided between the ears. <laughs> B between the ears. That would surely just be on top of the head. Yes. I would go in the shoes. <laughs> Because he won't know until it's too late. <laughs> um, so uh, I was doing or the gloves. A, same thing. I was doing that's a, actually uh, better because it's worse. Can't wash it off. A uh, um, some <laughs> kind of research. I think we've officially entered into that first zone we were talking about <laughs> from last week. What? Well, sure. I guess if you want to think about it that way. <laughs> um, so. Uh, I was doing a bit of poking around and research on the the actual clay kickers of the. Oh, there's first... a book about it. Yeah, did and I found did that... you watch the Colin Murphy interview in which he talks about the book, which is why I first heard of it. No, but he which talks book? about in one of the interviews he talks about there was an actual book written about the people that Tommy Shelby was the guys who dug underneath right. trenches. Right, and he mentioned the name of it. I forget what it was, but I did save it. I went to look it up, and I was like, I'm going to read that because it sounds fascinating. Yeah. Is that I, the same book, or did it's you... It's not uh, the book that I read. It's a. It was a significantly uh, meaty article that I, oh, well. I read that basically covered some of their uh, biggest challenges, you know, why they were so valuable in the war, the fact that really, honestly, their conditions were so oh, it's, poor yeah, it that it was insane. Horrific. So the bottom line is they were the real hero, the unsung heroes, or slightly sung, I suppose, well, heroes of the... Perhaps now. Yeah, of the uh, retroactive. <coughs> it was a bit of a bit of a Van Gogh <laughs> song. <laughs> um, sure. But, uh, but they, uh, they're specialization I came to appreciate all the more as I started poking around it because 
Uh, it turns out that a majority of them were like I, I was assuming. Okay, these guys they you know came to the military, then they were trained for this particular purpose or whatever else. No, not so. No, they were just so they literally these guys the volunteers. Weren't no, they? well. Yes, but the reason that they were so unique is because, and the reason they ended up calling them clay kickers is because these they guys can't dig using tools. Right. So the the that way would have been audible, they the, had to they the had, way yeah, that yeah the weird thing they basically literally it was, it, had it to was a, it was a knife. They literally like basically cut away at the dirt. Like I I don't know, and then they would like. It, it was a really weird uh, method that they didn't specifically go into in the article. But the bottom line is, these the guys that they hired for this particular position within the military were either mine workers that mm, already are that digging and doing sense. things like that, or uh, underground, uh, like as far as like trenching and things like that. Same type of thing because you're doing the same sentiment. But what I found unique was that they said. Uh, all of these men, they really didn't need a lot of training because they already had that kind of camaraderie and they were very easily able to fall into kind of the military skin, I suppose, or skeleton because yeah. all of their their infrastructure of uh, of kind of top-down leadership well, and all doing, this kind of stuff. When you do is, dangerous work, you tend right, to have you ne- strict you hierarchies have, anyways. Correct, exactly. So as I'm reading through this... Um, Tangentially, this is the news: is that uh, I am uh, a pseudo clay kicker <laughs> of sorts, and I that think I, have, the, I think I have gathered. I think the men of that age would take somewhat of an umbrage. Oh, with that claim. sure, that's probably true. But you get the luxury of being on the right side of the dirt while you do it. Well, that's yeah. Modern technology uh, uh, affords us some some uh, certain pleasantries i agree with that but all all the while uh i have changed jobs i'm no longer doing what i used to do and now i literally run oh, all so of the news for stuff. in that oh okay and it's fun and i'm enjoying it you tortured I, the word news a little bit to make that make i sense. did i tossed around the salad on it a little bit don't, <laughs> don't say that <laughs> but uh but the bottom line is i am i'm thoroughly uh uh, what's the word? I'm it's amused. <laughs> I'm amused. I'm thoroughly amused at the fact that I am just one step closer to becoming <laughs> my my desired uh, 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 waifu. <laughs> yeah, technically, I believe I, I'm about to reveal a fact I shouldn't because it paints me in a bad light. But technically, the male version of that is called husbando. <laughs> How do you know that? Because I've been around the internet too long. <laughs> Oh, dear. I have mine. You have yours. We all have got them. <laughs> um, anything else he's got two of? <laughs> I didn't say I had two. <laughs> I am loyal to my boss, Silco. Okay. Mostly because I fear he'd kill me. <laughs> anyway, so I thought that fun. Um, I just found that I was actually th- surprised by that. I didn't assume that... I suppose I would have imagined that actual clay kickers from the military would have had a little bit more intentional and specialized training, but apparently they didn't. In fact, they were hired well, considering in that, the military for their already specialized yeah, well, and, training. But arguably, consider that they didn't... What they had to learn to do would no doubt have been rather unlike the way they previously had done it. It's in not the like you're going to do things like that. Because well, you're not using knives in the mines. You have the benefit of proper big tools. Sure. So it's like they would have had to learn how to do it in this new way. So training didn't to really. Some it's like. degree, but I mean. I mean, it's more about the, the from being okay with being in such claustrophobic underground. Right, exactly. That I well, and the, the, the skill could have been taught to anyone because it was so unlike the way you would do it any other way. It was more about do you have the psychology, psychological fortitude to right. be un, in that kind of environment. Well, and that's the part that I felt like how fascinating that they recognized that these men already had that kind of steel in their Bones. veins. Yeah, um, It's got steel in his tubes. <laughs> Not that one. He's, he's gristly. It's actually catheter is what that is. <laughs> what? I don't think they make them out of steel. No, it's not a hard line, you it, weirdo. Couldn't it be? That'd be incredibly painful. How, how would it have been done in the early days? Okay, let's, let's get down that rabbit trail. When was the catheter invented and what was it made of? 
Who invented the catheter? That's the question. Ron Ron C. Catheter. catheter. <laughs> I think his name was actually Richard. <laughs> Actually, no. What his name was Sherman Long Catheter. <laughs> I'm looking that up. Yeah, Sherman Long. <laughs> that was his name, and he was actually uh, uh, he was done for indecency, and but and originally, it was one of those cases where the government oh, arrests someone and then puts them to work. Name. He was a urologist named Frederick Foley. <laughs> that's unfortunate. I'd have changed my name if it was that. <laughs> my name's Frank Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly, I'm an idiot. Let's just let's just say that. Okay. Uh, well, anyways, nice. but you didn't answer the major question. What were they made of? Glass. <laughs> <laughs> you had to be real. Still, they would have had to sedate you. I I wouldn't have consented otherwise. <laughs> Sometimes you'd get splinters if they went up too fast because it wasn't smoothed over glass. It still had all the raw little pieces. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Just imagine, because uh, that would be the worst thing. Because if something went wrong, it would be like a delayed. You wouldn't know about it immediately. <laughs> What is that? Like, I'm mean? imagining it's just like, you know, in the middle of the procedure, you just hear a slight kink, and you're like, it'd be like stepping on a landmine. You're like, Nothing. we just, it, everything will be okay as long as we don't, hold it, hold it, don't move it. <laughs> Technically, I should clarify that that's not how landmines work. That's only a thing done in movies. Landmines instantly explode. Uh, depending on the type. Nope. There are landmines that nope. do. It's no, all of them. It does depend on the type. Because I know for a fact that they there are, there's ex- one that is a reverse. You step down, and then if you step up, it. it are you sure about that, though? Because I am 90% sure. I won't say I'm 100% sure. but Because I have heard oh. that it is a myth created for that moment. Because the, to, have, to have a mind that you could be aware of before it went off would completely defeat the purpose. I suppose that's So the true. idea that stepping on it would only trigger it and then stepping off would actually go, it would let it go. It's like then everyone who ever stepped on a mine would have most likely survived. <laughs> because was, well, if you had the if you could recognize that you had done it, then you would be able to circumvent that. Whereas the point is it's supposed to be like it, it once you step it's gone. Yeah. I mean, maybe I could imagine perhaps a use, uh, if they had done it as this, like, we're going to make a specific type just to mess with people. So that, you know, almost as more of a psychological warfare than actual. But even then, I, the, the the concept of it happening in films is a fiction largely. For maybe sure. the, if such a thing existed, that was not what minds were. It would have had to have been specifically designed for that purpose. Why don't you clamber over the wall, freaky golem boy? Golem boy? I don't know. I'm trying to... Hey, stinker! Don't get too wandering too far ahead. <laughs> Whatever he's got is a good gun. I want it. <laughs> I'd like to take that with me. What is that? It's a... Shotgun doesn't seem to work. It's a... It's his dis... It's, 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 his, his... it's his removed bits. They turned it into a gun for him. It's his... His... Penal shroud. <laughs> if, I, if I've got to be smooth round the bend and you're going to give me the implanted cod piece, could you at least give me some hardware to work with so I don't feel inadequate? Looks like a dog, a, a tiny miniature dog house has been sewn onto the front of his junk. <laughs> Look at it next time. Look. Well, gonna... I mean, I agree. It's a cod piece, though. I think there's a far <laughs> better way of putting that than what you said. Sure. That was a that was a meandering mental image. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, off. Can, let's let's leave the man's junk. Leave that man alone. Stop it. Stop it. Leave that junk alone. I would get out a different gun than the shotgun because it doesn't seem to be helping me much. Oh, okay. Well, apparently. I went to get a different gun out and he said no. But the revolver didn't do much good last time either, and that's about the, be- the next best. I mean, maybe the sniper rifle, but that's unwieldy in such close quarters. I don't know. I... <sighs> Here's a random question. You got drafted. Would where would you? What would you want to do? Well, you don't get to decide when you get drafted. You 
sort of you can. They they'll they'll there's positions available because obviously they're drafting for all branches of the military simultaneously. Yes, but typically I, they just put you wherever you're needed. So I've potentially, already, but I think there were there are stories of like in fact in, in the band of brothers behind the scenes they talk about how a lot of the guys who ended up in the airborne division, it was because the recruiter not the recruiters the I guess who who is the opposite of. I mean, it's not recruitment if it's mandatory, but whoever the person would be who gives them assignments would basically said, we've got positions available in the Airborne and you'll get this much more a week. And a bunch of the guys were like, well, okay, <laughs> I'll do it for that much more a week. So I imagine uh, they would give you a certain degree of choice, like, okay, these are the positions available. These, these ones pay this much if you're willing to do it. I, Whoa, well, okay, I've already made up do... my mind about this. Ah, which is that ah, if fart guys. They... A draft was ever instituted because obviously well we technically don't like it's not gone. Well, but I'm saying if it was if it if it utilized, came. I suppose. Yeah. If it was ever utilized, the minute that I started seeing it utilized, I would just enlist because what then I could actually would that make it. Make I mean, I suppose you'd have the choice. But exactly. You would then have the control, at least to some degree. I'm not sure so. you would though entirely because certain branches, like you can be turned away if a branch isn't accepting. If they're like, yeah, no, we don't have those positions available, you'll have to take one of these Maybe. or go somewhere else. Um, so what, what is the actual question? Because the thing is, is you what, say, is what when you say things... Would you be? Or well, what? no, I, I'll get into more specifics, but I do think I disagree because that... I mean, I suppose there's historical roots so we could find out the answer, but when you're drafting in the middle of a war... Yes, I imagine they might say these are the positions that need filled, so this is where you're going. Whereas if you, but when you draft you, at the beginning of a war, all the positions need filled, and all of the men have been drafted. So you might as well let them pick because it's not like oh we need this. It's like no, we need everything. So take your pick of what you want to be. I mean, I suppose if you were, I know they draft in rounds where it's like they start with certain age groups and then expand to other age groups. That's not him. If you no. think you're preempting, I don't think that I'm works. I'm not. I'm just seeing. Because I think he's technically behind you when you come in. Um, I'd get out your own elephant gun or something better. Shotgun does not seem to help much, but I mean, maybe I'm just not getting enough hits. We need to try and use, yeah, the mines and the EMP grenades because they're the only real help we're going to have with him. Ah, uh, see, that's what he does to you. You could at least return the favor. Oh boy. Now, I imagine there might be certain qualification type things, which we'll get into what, what I'm saying, where it's like, okay, you can't just say, hey, I'd like to be a, you know, uh, engineer on a Navy ship. It's like, okay, if you don't have the education for that, they're probably going to tell you no. Right, of course. But let's Aptitude say hypothetically, <laughs> well, no, because I do, I suppose some things are technically, this is where I'm not sure how it goes. So this is why I'm not sure I have an answer to this definitively. Because I suppose some positions, despite not holding the usual titles, would still be considered officer positions. Like, I'm pretty sure to be a captain of a bomber plane, you would that's, that's an officer-level position. I'm not sure that you could be that without being an officer. I'm not confident that that's the case. Hmm. Because, of course, you're referred to as captains. You're not referred to by whatever rank you hold. Right. Because I don't think the rank you hold is literally captain. That's a separate rank. But I do imagine that if you're the guy in charge of this crew, you probably have to be at least officer material, whether or not you went to the academy or something. Uh, yeah, but I feel like it is a distinction. Like, they, I mean, you might be able to earn it, I suppose. But yes, but you're, what I was told by a, a buddy that was in the military is that eventually you could become an officer, but it, there's like three different phases of that that get skipped if you have actually gone to school. Well, yeah, or you not basically skipped, go but straight rather to it's it. like fast tracked. Yeah. Yeah, hop over the wall, creepy gremlin man. Yeah. Because basically, if I had the choice, I mean, technically, if I were drafted, mm, nice try, pal. Where I drafted now, I actually am in the luxury position of having this choice because I would say, well, sadly not actually, because the this kind of position no longer really exists but I would pick World War II let's say I have all the qual I, I am the same person now but I just happen to be born then and so I have the same qualifications and I would have absolutely chosen to be specifically a flight engineer on a bomber plane because hmm. that 
just I'm like that sounds pretty darn dope especially because when you're the flight engineer the ship is like it's essentially like being the engineer on a on a on a in a fiction setting where it's like, oh, you're the, you'd be Scotty essentially. Yeah. Where it's like, yes, technically everybody does the maintenance of the ship, but it's like, you're the guy in charge of keeping the plane running. Yeah. I mean, there's obviously ground crews who do that full time. They're not actually combatants. There's going to be mechanics back at the, at the air bases, right. but it's like, you have to work with them to make sure that the plane is running. And there's just something about that. I'm like, that would be fascinating. I thought for a second, originally I was like, you know what? It would also be really fun to be the equivalent of that on, in a tank crew. The that's, problem is, see, that's what the I problem think. is tank crews are so small that there isn't an equivalent of that. Everybody is that as well as the other thing. Gotcha. No one's job is to keep the tank running. Everyone's job is to keep the tank running <sighs> and tanks are awful. Are they really? Yeah, I mean, a bomber plane, despite not being luxurious, is like, I have a seat. <laughs> I have a station I can sit at. I get a pencil and a thing. Like, in a tank, it's like, okay, we're all getting in, and none of us are moving for the next 12 hours. <laughs> it's like, you're going to be up against the boiler, reloading shells in the back, and you're not going to leave. <laughs> Literally ever. That was that was the worst job because if there was a fire in the tank, you were hosed. Because you would literally have to crawl in first, get behind the gunner, and literally you're just in the back with the shells and the engine. So it's like if something blows, you're the first to go. And if something catches fire, you're the last one out. So you're basically the guaranteed short straw in that incident. So it's like there's no one's job who's like he's in the back of the tank fixing stuff. It's like, no, that's not how it works, sadly. That would be a fun job because there's some. That was him. I know. I was there's, trying to find. I find there to be weird... something fun about the idea of like. I because I also think on a less exciting level, obviously because like if I were drafted and they found out I had an engineering degree, they'd be like, okay, well we're putting you in the engineering corps, and that would be kind of fun. Like you, you get to be the guys who build bridges or often blow the bridges as well. You're the ones helping with, you know, the infrastructure, and that could be kind of interesting. But I'm like, but a bomber plane is such an interesting piece of machinery <laughs> that yeah. to be the guy in charge of it would just be a lot of fun. So anyway, sure. that's me. Tank crew would be fun, but I did as I did the research of like, is there an equivalent? I'm like, there isn't, and none of the alternatives sound like positive. They all sound really kind of awful, except for maybe being the commander, which, again, you probably have to be an I officer had, to do. I have two thoughts as far as being That's what it. they do. <laughs> yep. I have generally two Whoa. thoughts a day. Well, Anything I mean, else is too much for I'm my brain. I'm sad to have spent one on <laughs> I feel bad for you now. <laughs> um, no, I, uh, I think I probably would end up either preferring to be, like, a medic, which I know sucks as it far as the suck. job. However... I have definitely the disposition and the the tendency to care. You're not squeamish and, and, at all? Not really. I mean, and that can. Here's because I mean, that's not. I'm not squeamish about like. If I've done an injury to myself, I'm not like, oh, I can't look. But the kinds of injuries you would uncover are not just like, oh yeah, you know, I cut myself on something. It's like, okay, this dude's Adam's apple is now in my hand. <laughs> I can see his larynx. He is choking on blood, and it's spraying on me. I'm like, that's a lot. Sure. The only I don't other... want to stick a guy's guts back inside of him. I'm just like, I don't. That's that's that ain't a headache. That's not like, oh, I cut myself. I I fell on something. I'm shaving. Yeah. Well, because I mean, I'm not saying I'm squeamish about. There's a limit, I suppose, where it's like, okay. If you've been shot and it's just a bullet wound and all I have to do is pull it out and stuff it and, and wrap it, it's like, okay, I could do that. But it's like, okay, your entrails are on me and I have to somehow put them back. I'm like, I don't, that's not something I want to do. No. Um, the other thing that I would think I is would Is that prefer... medic or is that surgeon though? Because technically medics, medics mostly just the do the job. They get, get you yeah, to yeah, the yeah. surgeon. Yeah. Um, it's like if you're if the guts are out, it's like okay, I'm leaving him here. Yeah, because he'll be dead by the time he gets to the surgeon. But the uh, the one that I think I would pri I would be like a primary on it is kind of cliche, but I actually like the idea of sniper. I like That's a, I like the notion of literally drug. just locking in I to think one space and anything, saying if I pull the trigger, it's the time, and if I don't, 
another day. If anything, in a modern context, I think I would agree because of the fact that bomber planes now are not the kinds of machines they were. They're a lot more... I'm not sure what to say about them because it's like they're simultaneously simpler and more complicated. By which I mean, of course, their engineering is far more complicated, but they're also a lot of the times more automated. Sure, where and it's that like makes them more you're complex. not as directly involved with the actual like running of the plane. It's not an analog machine anymore. Sure. So I think in a modern context, especially because in urban warfare, I think sniping is a lot more useful. Yeah. I mean, they, we, they use them more now than I think they ever have in history because of the fact that... Well, I think what's interesting about I could sniping be wrong about that. is that sometimes, not all the time, because many, you know, it's not an uncommon uh, knowledge or, you know, not not normal that people know that snipers often are not necessarily pulling the trigger but there's a part of that job that i find fascinating too that it's just like purely the the side of the job that's like i'm reporting on this because this is what i'm seeing further up ahead and our guys yeah, need to be recon, aware of it. Do a recon yeah job. and so the thing i about find it, though, that interesting too because especially with like uh, i know one of the things we've run into with with modern don't kind of go into that uh technology it, or it more modern context of of engagement and war, I suppose, uh, <laughs> is um, is the idea that like people are disregarding the kind of rules of engagement as far as using children and things like that, and so you have anybody, literally anyone at all, could be a target or a potential threat, and you're going just getting eyes, you know, five hundred yards up ahead is super useful. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But that's... You're almost talking more about the recon than the actual sniping. Well, sure. Which... Uh, but, I, but I would argue that's like 80% of your job. If even... I if don't not know enough more. about it to be sure of that. Like, the, I don't think... When you watch... Like, I used to be really fascinated by... There was... It was one of those old History Channel shows where it was specifically all about the sniper school. Yeah. And I think it was even more specifically the Marine Corps sniper school who are... Wow! Who are considered the one of the more elite. Elite, yeah. And the thing that I do know that I would struggle with is, like, I like the idea of it because it sounds a lot more fascinating. But there's also the element of, like, okay, I have to crawl across this one mile long field without being seen. And it's going to take me, like, you know, two days. And that's my job. Whether I, When I get there, I may not even take the shot, but I am going to spend two days crawling across a field. And I'm not sure I have that level of patience where it's like, literally, I'm going to sit here for two hours. And I'm going to crawl ten feet. I'm going to sit here for another two hours. Because, like, there are stories, especially, maybe these are more fringe cases, but... There's who's the guy? There was a famous story of like the the previous record holder for like most kills in Vietnam, who literally told the story about one of his jobs. He had to crawl across a field that was enemy occupied, like they had their camp there. Yeah, he was in a ghillie suit, and he was literally going, "I would sit for hours while guys walked like on me or and around me, and then when I had an opening, I would walk, I would crawl like you know ten feet." over the course of 20 minutes. And then I'd stop again. He's like, I spent three days getting across the field, took the shot, spent three days getting back out. And I'm like, that part of it I do think would be incredibly Tedious. laborious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because no. it's not just like, all right, I'm going to climb up in the tower and take pot shots while you no, guys... No, 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 no. I don't think it's always that. And I, I find that other part, honestly interesting like i don't think i would struggle with the patience of that side of things but the, see, the, the biggest stressor are you sure about that though because think about it when think i'm on my that. own i don't have a problem with that kind of level of tediousness but see it's not it's, the tedium it's the lack of anything that it's one thing to be like i'm going to be doing because i can imagine again in some ways is there's a lot of tedium to the flight engineer thing where it's like okay i'm you're Spending the whole time with your clipboard, but going, okay, I'm taking readings, I'm making calculations on what, how's our fuel consumption, how's all this stuff. That's tedious in the sense that it's constant 
sort of, I mean, menial work, sort of, in a way. It's it's nothing physically exertionate, but it's like, okay, I've got to pay fine attention to small details. But with this, it's literally sitting and waiting. Yeah. And, I mean, I enjoy a bit of quiet time, but, I mean, I don't, even I don't think I need that much. <laughs> Because you can't do anything. It's not like okay, I'm. It's even one thing to say, or I'm gonna sit in my in my perch and I'm you know I've got sight and I'm just waiting for the command and it, it takes you know eight hours because that happens too where it's like okay I've got the shot and I'm just waiting to be told to take it. Right. Because then there's a degree of actual focus of like you're still doing the thing. You're still watching the guy. You're still tracking. Right, you're him. having to track. You're making yeah. sure that when the order comes through, you can do it. But that's not the same as what you're doing when you're literally just crawling across a field. Ah, now maybe I'm overblowing that. Maybe that's not as common as it as it you know see as I've heard because I would hope not. I cannot see, but just that the the image of that in my mind, I'm like that does sound really awful. See, I feel like the the part that would stress me the most in that particular position no, 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 would be uh, the the idea that if you happen to catch the locale of a, a enemy sniper on the other kind of end. Well, those are often the most tense moments. Right, that's what I mean, because you're both technically, you know, there and you don't know whether the other person's seen you or not. It's like... <laughs> I, do I take the shot and risk the fact that I'm giving away my position and whatever else, or do I risk that he potentially sees me and both of us are just kind of keeping eyes on each other? I mean, that's a Well, that's you're not going to be keeping notion. eyes on each other because once one of you... It's a bit of the Catch-22 thing where it's like once one of you knows... What's the... No, it's the prisoner's dilemma. Isn't that the name of the paradox where it's like... Yes. You would all be better served by being truthful, but because you have no way of knowing that everyone else is being truthful, everyone's going to lie. Right. Or I, I'm probably for failing it correctly, but it's something along the lines of if you could all cooperate without being able to communicate, like if you all kept to the same story, you'd all do better. But because no one else knows that everyone, everyone else is basically paranoid that the, everyone else is squealing. So everyone squeals. It's a little bit of like, once you've found the enemy sniper, it's like, okay, you're going to have to take the shot because you can't take the chance that he's seen you yet that, and that he knows where you are, even if you know where he is. I don't... I mean, I... There's... I know that there's some subject matter that actually deals with that, and it's like... I don't know if it's a movie I'm thinking of or something where it's like, that's actually among the most intense things that you could be in. It's like, okay, st sniper battles are actually incredibly horrifying. Right, that's right, yeah. Okay, that's kind of what I'm where at. are you at? I'm going to run out of ammo on this thing, and I don't think I'm helping. I'm not even sure I've hit him properly, because he's invisible most of the time. I think my corner strategy is reasonable, though. I think I'm hitting him, but... Because the thing is... That's going to be super slow goings, though. Well, yes. Because when he's not invisible, I can see him on the radar. When he jumps over the walls, it's obvious. And I can see his distortion from the invisibility, like... I just saw something happen over there. So it's like, I have pretty reasonable line of sight from where I'm at. It's just that, yeah, it's going to be a matter of patience. But again, hey, talk about your sniping game. Not that I'm really doing that, but it's, it's tangential. <laughs> So, I don't know. The thing also about tanks is that they actually were notoriously, uh, bu like, I was about to say buggy. <laughs> they were notoriously... That would be bad. They were notoriously... Darn uh, tank, pushing it right, and it goes left. <laughs> they were very prone. They were not nearly as indestructible as people thought, as, as the image of them portrays. Hmm. They were constantly breaking down. And so you'd often be like, all right, we're in this circumstance, and we're mostly screwed. <laughs> Like, we can't move, we can't shoot, we gotta fix this in the middle of the battlefield while hoping no other tanks realize that we're out of commission. Because if they do, they'll just pop us like ducks. <laughs> I am out of the good stuff, so I'm out and I'm now on to the second good stuff. Okay, well he's obviously over there then. He's jumping over walls, he doesn't even need to. I'm gonna take a chance here, because I know he's there. 
Oh, I think I got him. I think I got him. Oh, okay, he's about to get me. Oh, and now he's back. Well, I took a chance and it didn't pay. How did we get on that? And how did I it take know. so long? We brought it up. Drafting. Hi. Something about that. World War II? No, oh, because you brought up World War II stuff, and then I thought about what would it Because I wouldn't... I mean, that was World War One, the, the tr trench stuff, but I wouldn't want to do that. Oh, yeah, because you're saying about where people get assigned and whether or not you have choice and whatnot. Yeah, maybe. Well, food for thought. Want to rant more about news? Do you have additional news? I felt like I did, but I'm not sure I do, actually. It was because the Star Wars thing bothered me, but then something else Disney did bothered me. Woos, woos. Well, does Disney ever not bother you? <sighs> I'm wondering that. Because <laughs> that really, I mean, genuinely, that actually, like, I was, I was... It's such a disingenuous... I mean, slap in the face is the only thing you can think about. It. It's that, because genuinely, I do think... What is? Uh, he's he on the other side here, or yes, he can jump over walls. I know he can, but like, see, that was actually yes, but this is he knows you're there now, and well, he, he knows the, I'm here, and he has grenades and the elephant. He's got grenades and the to elephant grab gun. those and throw them. No, back. this ain't a Call of Duty. See, that game. would be the most helpful thing ever. Yes, the game would be helpful if it was easier. <laughs> well, uh, see. That's easier in a way that makes sense, though. Like, if you press the right button, it's saying, oh, you recognize the grenade's there, and I'm throwing it yeah, back. Yeah, but he does throw, That's like, That's something three sensible that you could do in real life. You do say that, but then again, how many of that... How many times did that really happen on the battlefield? Because I imagine when a grenade lands at your feet, you don't know when it was pulled and when it was thrown, so I feel like the reaction to pick it up and throw it back is a risk. Because you don't know how long it's got until it goes. Sure. Like in a video game, you know that the time it lands at your feet is there's a there's a set timer because it's a game. Whereas if that happened in the battlefield, I'm not sure you'd have the reaction time to be like, ah, pick it up and throw it. I mean, I think you'd barely have the reaction time to dodge it or get out of the way. Here you are. No. Stop it. The actual cover, you dingus. Well, I am bleeding and drunk. Sounds like a Friday night. <laughs> oh. Another Saturday night. Uh, well, I can't remember what Disney did that made me mad. It was probably something that they did. <laughs> probably they, something. Because they just they just seem to do that. It is a it's a. Why is it that companies, even the, like good companies and well-meaning companies, can't leave well enough alone? And we've talked about this before, but I'm think now at this point. I'm I think if about... you can't leave well enough alone, that qualifies you to be a bad company. Sure. I mean, that does seem like a reasonable enough standard to say, "Hey, lay off." <laughs> Here's but other I mean... news. I suppose this wasn't what I was gonna get at, but it does. I am. I am. I'm. We need I have a new qualms. controller. <laughs> well, that was certainly. I have qualms about this whole Mario movie thing. Huh. I'm. Glad that Nintendo is a kind is a company that does seem to insist on quality. Still, they're very protective of their IP. So I'm like, the fact that it's good doesn't exactly surprise me. And this is, I mean, people saying it's good. I haven't seen it. I don't exactly intend to, to be honest. But there's a part of me that's like, okay, I'm glad it's good because it sucking would just be sort of sad all around. But I'm not exactly happy about it because I think that conceptually it was still a weird thing to do. And I'm especially perturbed because Illumination was really just a few more bad movies away from dying. <laughs> and it needed to happen. They need to go. Like, Why is... Are they worse, do you think, than Google? Or than, uh, than Disney? Disney's bad because they're bad business practice. Illumination is just like, I'm actually surprised they ever existed. Because they, it's like, okay, Despicable Me 1, their only good film. Yeah, a decent was and their first film. idea. And it's then... like, literally, you did one good film and have just piled crap upon crap since. Well, and it I mean, astonishes selling, me. Selling, that's the thing that's problematic. Not really, they... though, because they're not, they weren't doing well. And now I'm annoyed because I'm like, okay, now this thing's a massive success, so there's them around for another five years, at least. At least, yeah. So it's like, we could have, 
like had had Nintendo partnered with a different studio, I'd be like, oh, I okay. Want you to look closely into my glutes. If anything, he seems to not want that. That's why he's lifting you up out of his eye line. Because when he starts, you're staring straight into the groin. He's like, stop that. My eyes are up here. <laughs> I've had a little work done. <laughs> the doctor said no one would notice. <laughs> <coughs> oh, Run. boy. So, anyways, I'm just, I'm perturbed because I don't feel the need to see it. I don't care enough about Mario. I'm, like, I'm glad Nintendo's not out the cash because had it sucked, I'd be like, oh, that's feel, I feel bad for Nintendo. But also, had it sucked, I'd be like, okay, now Illumination can die, which it needs to do. So, it just seems like it's a lose-lose. Plus, and then people have been speculating, like, oh, now, now is the time of the Nintendo Expanded Universe, and I'm like, please don't. <laughs> please don't say that, Dad. Please don't say <laughs> like, that. Like, really, I, that's the last thing we need right now, because as much as I do admire Nintendo for their insurance, insistence on quality, they are not above Disney's level of just remaking the stuff that they've already made. They well, are. They are not. Start they are not very generating of new stuff these days. They tend to hold on to the stuff they've had. Which, fair enough, it was good in its day. Still is good some of it, but I mean, yeah, but the, new I'm, ideas are nice too. New, yeah, exactly. What my my biggest problem? Because if they make a Zelda movie, I won't is, be able to ignore it. I'm just saying that, that now. Sounds that because the thing is Mario. Of, Mario, from what I have heard of it. It is essentially a Mario game, but a movie. It's like, oh, it's just the usual kind of Mario stuff. It's stuff happens, and there's a bunch of action set pieces, and there's not much of a plot, because it's the plot is the thing that strings together the various moments and set pieces. So I'm like, it's essentially... The reason why I've heard some people saying, you know, the, the critic response has actually been more negative because for the most part, it seems like a heavily fan heavy, like there's lots of Easter eggs. And part of the reason people like it is because it's basically only fans would get it. And I'm not as sure I support such things like whether or not it's OK. I just think conceptually it probably didn't need to exist. Sure, you don't like fanfare. It's... So if they made that, and again, I don't care much about Mario, which is why I'm not that annoyed, but if they do that with Zelda, and it's like, if they made it a good, like, serious, honest adventure film, like, a, like I mean, I would, I would prefer it to be something a little more on the heavier side. Not like heavy sets, because it never really has been, but like, I would rather it be more Twilight Princess than Wind Waker. Sure. And I am astonished that worked, because I was totally from the hip. So if it's just like, oh, it's a Zelda thing, and don't you get like the references, I'd be like, no, I actually wanted a good story, because the games do deliver that a lot of the time. How did I do that? I swear I killed myself. I don't think he shot me at all. <laughs> So I would just be disappointed if they make it where it's like it's good in the sense of it's a fans of it will like it thing. I would be disappointed because I'm like, that's not what I I would like. I would, if they made it like, oh, yeah, we're basically just going to tell the same kind of a story, but in a movie format rather than a game. I'd be like, OK, I'm enough interested in that. But I this is all speculative because there's been no word that they will do that. I just also get so annoyed when people jump to that. It's like, can we... Why is that the new standard? <laughs> like, it was bad enough when every film wanted to be the start of a trilogy. It's like, okay, you know, set your ambitions more reasonably. Now it's like, okay, we're going to literally launch an entire universe. I'm like, no! Make a good film! One foot in front of the other, please! Make one good film, make another. If you continue doing it long enough, maybe then you'll do it all right. It's like everyone's basically trying to chase Marvel, even Marvel. <laughs> and that's the sad thing. It's like, no, just let it be what it is. I don't know. We'd like you to I'm being disgruntled. Yeah. You're a little on the... On the Because uh, I watched the Star Wars thing today and it made me mad. And the Mario thing I heard about earlier in the week. And I was just like... <sighs> why... Can't we just be, ha have a little bit of sense in our lives? Well, but there's unfortunately a great deal of sense that's missing from 
<laughs> I'm looking forward to this uh, the Kenobi thing though, because that's still that supposed a new, to come it's out. It's a new season, yeah. No, it's a fan made thing, and that's the only reason I'm excited. Is I'm like, hey, somebody who actually has passion in life. I'd like to see what they do. <laughs> Certainly don't get that from literally almost anywhere else. Certainly not at Disney, sadly. That's what's astonishing. You just go... I, I still miss... I stand by the point I made a few weeks ago that's like... I do think that Hollywood views films as nothing more than investments these days. It's like, okay, we put in this amount of money and we can maybe make like a 20% return on three years worth of work. And they're content to do that regardless of the quality of the product. And I'm just like, that is just the most soulless way to do that. That's, yeah, I mean, it's man. just like so disingenuous. And I, but again, I think it explains everything. It's like, that's, uh, to get back to the Illumination Disney distinction, Illumination is just bafflingly bad. Like, if anything, I suppose they do serve a purpose as being like, don't do this. See, my question, my, Whereas my Disney, answer I think, is, is actually niche. I wouldn't want to meet the people who like the stuff they produce. <laughs> Whereas Disney, I almost feel like there's a... I won't go as far as to say malevolence, but like there is a... There is a bad spirit at Disney. Yeah. Where it's like their mentality about what they do is off-putting. Illumination, I don't imagine, wants to make bad films. I just think they don't know how to make good films. Right, they're still... Disney clearly it. knows how to make good films because they have. They just don't care enough to do it anymore. <laughs> uh, it's a sad thing. So, but anyways... You see, I figured it out. I know. I actually... Here's a... T I didn't mean to get into this. <laughs> since, you've, since you've untapped the salt bottle today, we might as well just pour it all over everything. <laughs> I... Um, you know, it's the seasoning of life, so... I am curious. I thought that was variety. Well, there you go. Variety. Seasoning. I'm saying uh, But I would... I am... I have been... I suppose I should give the context. I've been going through the sort of Studio Ghibli filmography recently. Studio Ghibli? Uh, Japanese Disney. Think of it that okay. way. Okay. Uh, like Spirited Away, Howl's Moving Castle, those okay, kinds of gotcha. things. Okay, gotcha. And... I have I thought about it because I watched one I think it was earlier this week <clears throat> and it made me curious I was like I wish almost that I hadn't grown up with Disney films because I don't think I can possibly objectively review them anymore and that's because when you watch something like Studio Ghibli not only is it something I haven't seen but it's also from a totally different culture which means it's the experience is something that is unusual and unfamiliar, and therefore my take on it is going to be, at the very least, uh, I mean, honest doesn't quite sound like the word, but I mean, I don't feel like I can give an honest review of a Disney thing because I'm so familiar with it, I'm not sure I would... Un it's a bit of the... Uh, uh, what's the, the the quote that I quoted once before? The to, re to return to the same place and see it for the first time. Hmm. It's like I don't know that I it, to be able to get to do that because I don't think even if I were to just like oh I'll rewatch them as an adult, I still think my perspective would be tainted by them being part of my childhood. Yeah, which and the reason I get onto all this is because there is a cynical <laughs> part of me. <clears throat> That wants to say Art. that wants to say maybe Disney was never really the best. Because here's what I would say: other studios have made worse films more often, but other studios have also made. In fact, I would say, aside from Illumination, every one of the other major studios has produced a film better than anything Disney has ever produced. Hmm. And I mean, like I. Th I, I I think there's even multiple choices. Like, Sony has produced garbage films. They also produced Into the Spider-Verse, which I think is better than anything Disney's ever made. Hmm. And that's, I mean, I don't think that's a niche opinion, unless you just don't like the movie, I suppose. But anyone No, it's not that I didn't anyone like the movie, who likes I don't the movie, know that I would rank it quite that high. I anyone mean, I... who likes the movie, it seems to be a kind of... The people who like it are really big about it. I mean, I would call myself one of those people because I do think it's 
in terms of its just sheer originality and quality, I don't, I mean, whether or not it grabs you emotionally, I can appreciate it as just a stellar piece of art, genuinely. Like, even though I, the story honestly is not the thing that I'm like, oh, wow, I'm just touched. It's like, no, I'm actually just impressed that something this artistically interesting was made. And then something like DreamWorks actually has more good eggs in their basket than I would say Sony did. But I mean, for me, at least, if I had to pick, I would say like something like Prince of Egypt is better than anything Disney's ever made. Easy. Hmm. So the question is, Disney seemed to have gotten their reputation by making the most reliably good things. But have can you name a Disney film that is truly like looking back on it without the nostalgia, which again is sort of impossible. That's why I feel like my perspective is I wish I could... He's going to come right on top of you. That's why I wish I could almost reset my perspective to be more more uh, objective about it. But oh, is, have they on. produced I anything don't... that is just truly stellar? Disney? Yes. I don't just it's mean been good, because they produce dude. a lot of good things, and they've produced a lot of good things. I think they're sort of in the camp of... Whatever you're doing right now. No one can see what he's doing right now, but I have to. <laughs> and it's very weird. Imagine that with your own third eye. <laughs> uh, well, I guess here's what I would say. Given the given that you have seen the examples I give of better films from better other studios, I won't say better studios. Do you think Disney has produced something of equal caliber to those particular films? In the past, yes. Like what? So they're older films, like like, what? Uh, like uh, Hello Dolly is technically Disney. What? Um, yeah, I'm uh, not surprised that that's Disney. I'm, why on earth would you pull that out? I enjoyed that film. I thought it was fairly good. It was a play, um, though. It's just a film version of a play. Well, sure. And uh, not exactly. I was talking more about the classic Disney animation, I suppose. Well, okay. Because Disney, regard, the producing Disney, the pr the production company has produced just about everything. I mean, like, they have... They technically made the, you know, the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, but those were made by separate studios released by Disney because they own the rights to the Okay, so stuff. You, you're getting I'm talking about more of, like, Disney classic anim animation. Well, because Disney Corporation before. is not the same as Disney Animated Studios, sure. who, makes the, who actually makes the films. Okay. So that's what I'm talking about. I mean, if you're going to say anything Disney's name is on, I mean, sure, there's probably better examples, but... Yeah. Something Disney made themselves in-house. Because I would say the best you can do... Some people would say Lion King. That's a valid enough choice. I would say the closest they've ever come is probably Beauty and the Beast. I mean, that's a, there's a reason that's among their masterpieces, and I think fairly so. Mm. I can't think of anything else that I'm like, wow, this is so captivating and excellently done because that's the other thing I have to struggle with is in terms of raw the stories are obviously the things I'm most familiar with but I also don't feel like I have a valid perspective on their art style anymore because it's so ubiquitous that I don't know that I have a valid comparison like the Studio Ghibli stuff sure I'm gaining valid comparison now by watching other things but I don't know that I can because nowadays, especially with the technology being what it is, I can watch something that even if I'm not like greatly moved by it, I can still think, wow, in terms of animation, this is really stunning to watch. Yeah. And I don't know that I have that with Disney, not necessarily because it's not, but it might just be because I'm too familiar with it that I don't see it that way anymore. I don't know. You have any skin in this game or are you just, are you just indulging my salt? I Am I just force both. feeding you the salt? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's so salty. Challenge my opinion or agree. I yeah, I'll accept either. I feel like we've... I mean, I've agreed for the most part in this... Well, because let's... I'm attempting to parse. You're, but you're, am I applying my current Disney bitterness to the past or am I seeing through the curtain? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I mean, I understand you're... Is what's caused you to have such a change of heart? Well, at I least think it's to give the, them I think shot. it's the fact that I am watching other stuff. 
Specifically, I'm cur I think Arcane put me in a mood where I'm like, I'm actually fascinated by the medium of our animation as an art form, sure. not just as a means of storytelling. Like, there's actually something about it that I now appreciate artistically more than just story-wise, narratively, I'd say. So that's why one of the reasons I started watching the Studio Ghibli stuff is because I've known about them forever because they where have been he? around forever. I think that was a grenade they got you. But I've never watched much of their stuff. And then there's, I mean, other things. Obviously, I've seen DreamWorks stuff and Sony stuff. DreamWorks, I feel, is the only studio that comes close to even trying to compete in a in a sheer, not volume, but like I think popularity. They, well, and maybe. I think they are, they are, again, an animation studio. Pure and simple. They make movies. Right. Technically, if you're talking about Disney animation not Disney, the corporation that owns everything, then they are also a studio that produces films. Sony's kind of like, I think films are an afterthought for them because that's not where they make most of their money. Right. So I suppose I would have to agree, that, especially because, you know, DreamWorks was literally founded as a rivalry from Disney by former Disney employees. So it's like, yeah, you got a point there. I'm trying to think of any other major studios. Other than like Illumination, Blue Sky, are they still around? Blue Sky, they did. I, they're I, the, they're the. Wow. Okay, it's gone. Manny the Mammoth, Ice Age. Oh, Ice Age. They're the Ice Age tri or trilogy or whatever it's up Those, to now. That cow got milked. To yeah, dry they're. Too. I mean, that talk about they're on the Disney bandwagon with that certainly. Yeah. So I don't know. DreamWorks, I think, has is sort of the more hit and miss, but sometimes when they hit, it's like, where'd that come from? And that's the thing I'm trying to say. Is Disney just an A student who doesn't ever really do anything impressive, but always does something good? Because, again, I think Prince of Egypt is, like, one of the best animated movies ever. That's... That's like genuinely, but ever. that's almost objective. Like that's not. Well, even, I mean, like I grant, I grant you, it's still art. So therefore, there is always going to be subjective elements to so, it. But people yeah. on a prolific level have said, like that is. It's, I mean, genuinely, you have to acknowledge it. It's like, okay, has Disney ever produced a Prince of Egypt? And the and again, I mean, has I, to be no, I suppose. That's the question. Is it's like. Again, I think the closest they've come has been things like Lion King or Beauty and the Beast. And I think that's kind of it. That's all that I can think of. I mean, I'm trying to think of even their oldest stuff. And I don't know. Like, I don't know. It's a tough... This is the kind of thing that I feel like I wish I could come to a more objective answer, but I don't think that I can because my perspective is so warped already. I mean, warped is a harsh term, but this isn't the kind of thing that you can just unlearn. When you grow up on this stuff, it's like seeing it again for the first time becomes nearly impossible. You see, I figured it out. So I know what you were I don't know. I was simply trying to gauge whether or not my current anger at Disney is what's poisoning my past appreciation, or if maybe it's see, causing me to see the light, as it were. Well, I, don't, I think I don't want. To, I mean, I there's there's certainly. I certainly think that people that, who are all about like, oh, there's the people who are the Disney people. Where it's like, I love Disney stuff, and that's my personality. Well, that's what I was. Gonna, and then there's also people who are like, I hate Disney, and that's my personality, and I don't want to be that either. So if I'm just being bitter because I'm being bitter, then I'd rather quell that. But then there's a part of me that's like, well, I don't just want to dismiss the possibility, especially now that I am seeing other things with a more critical eye. Hmm. I have to wonder. Basically, I'm asking you to shrink me, so if you could just get out get out the beard and the pipe and well, tell I me what I what my what went wrong in my youth. The problem is as a Use as a use as a clinical psychologist, which I'm not. <laughs> uh, I I do feel like you. It's almost like retroactive justification. Like you want to you want to you want to say, well, those that used to be a brand or a, a studio, I suppose that I felt I could 
depend on or like that the movies were good and I remember having great movies when I was growing up or whatever it may be. Yeah, but see, that's and the question going, is when you're a kid, how do you know what a great movie is? Well, you don't. That's, exactly. Yeah. So that's the thing I'm having to ask myself is I have a skewed perspective because as a kid, I never would have been able to qualify these as, wow, as being great films. And yet I have so much nostalgia and memory for them right. that I'm not sure I could view them now objectively and determine whether or not they are great films. Well, and arguably, this is where you come down to brand recognition only, where I go, it's probably not that they're great films, honestly. Like, there are... It is... I mean, Disney has gone through dark ages where it's like, okay, even the market recognizes that Disney isn't producing great stuff right now. I mean, we're in one of those before, but that happened in the sort of 80s as well. I forget the kinds of things coming out then, but it was like the little... From the, the Disney renaissance, which began with The Little Mermaid, was... The beginning of all of their, probably their most famous stuff happened after that. I mean, obviously some of the the oldest stuff is famous for different reasons, but it's like, they are not a company that is a spotless record. The market itself bears that out. So that's why I suppose, again, but then there's also part of me that's like, am I trying to justify my bitterness? Because I don't want to do that either. Which is why I'm asking you. I because only you can, can tell me. Friars. Can you? Can only you can tell me what's not in my mind. I don't. There have been a great many films on a Disney level that I've gone back to and gone, yeah, they're not as good. Like, like that I used to think were like just killer movies as a as a kid. I'm going. They're not, though. Like, there's better storytelling that happens elsewhere in movies that I think do a better job. It It's a bit like Disney decided this is what they're good at and this is what we're going to do. Like, I would say, I would argue around the time of, like... You know what I just the, occurred to me? Not, well, not Alice in Wonderland. What's the, one, what's the movie I'm thinking of? Around the time know. of... That was recent. Of I mean, no, 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 no. Of oh, the original uh, animated one. That was the fifties, I think. No, it wasn't. Also, Wonderland though. Um, Peter around Pan. the time of, I almost said, uh, Mary Poppins, the original. Sixties ish. Yeah, that at that point. It's a live action and, though. That's still kind of well. Different. It was a it was a mix. It was a live action and uh, an animation said, at the same time. Yes. Disney was still alive, so you can't now, you know, op, have have him opt out. But it was like once they developed that movie and they figured, okay, we have some success in this. They found some sort of secret sauce with like taking children's narratives. Peter, well, yeah, Peter but, Pan. Well, and, they, well, they were doing that and, before that. Well, yeah, again, but, Alice in Wonderland, Peter Pan. These were before the. 60s. But that's right. But I'm saying their niche, their whole niche, then at that point became even this Pinocchio kind of, was a myth, and that was one of their first things. Sure, it's not lights. I mean, they they began with myths. But the, arguably, but that's, but that's the niche they. That's the that's the rut they landed in then. Like, you know what I mean? I don't think I would just call it a rut. I think they did it on purpose. Like, Walt borrowed stories from people all the time. Yeah. And just produced them on a different level. And with maybe different elements, including the animation yeah. thing. I don't think that that's a f- necessarily a fair criticism, given that that was how movies were made at the time. Very few movies were original. They were often film adaptations of things that existed. Which is why Dracula is the most commonly portrayed film characters because it's like they base their stuff off of books a lot of the time. Because I guess it was back in the age when film was new, so they felt like we have to make, we have to borrow the credibility of previous medium in order to make our own feel legitimate. So I don't know that that's exactly a. There's potential merit to the criticism of, like, Disney just basically steals and often cheapens stories that already existed. Well, this is a strategy. You lasted longer than I thought. Well, I was trying to sneak behind him and see... I don't I think that's going to work. I think this is a boss fight. They're not just going to let you pummel him once. I don't know. I don't think we're getting anywhere with this. You want to wrap us up from my salt? Add some sugar to, to quell the saltiness. I don't know if that's how you do that. There's some culinary technique. I mean, we've got on this many times, which is just, it comes back to, again, the the idea of if you 
if you are ever on autopilot, that's never a good sign. And Disney has been on autopilot for a long time. Yeah, you would argue even that Disney... That, that is the issue. The argument could very easily be made, especially because I recently read... I mean, this is kind of random, but the Steve Jobs biography, like, when he's talking about the guys at Pixar, the way they talk about Disney is actually, like, astonishingly disparaging. John Lasseter at one point said that having Disney technically own the rights to his characters felt like leaving children with child molesters, and I was like, I know what you and your Wow, that's a very poignant statement, especially from John Lasseter, who's, like, a super... Kind and sort of everyone talks about the fact that he's like a super gentle, sort of soft spoken. It's like that's a very bold statement from someone with that personality. Sure. And it's it because that was at the time when they were doing a lot of the direct to video sequels, like the Aladdin things, which were just pitifully embarrassing. And it's so it's like you gotta admit, Disney's had the things Disney are doing now are not new to them now. Correct. And I guess maybe that's, that's what I'm realizing. Yes, Disney's always been weirdly trash, but it's gotten no, no. no here's the thing, and I'm, it's just weirdly trash. It is because you've it's accepted eccentric garbage. <laughs> you, you, it's accepted because for a while the niche and the groove that they found themselves in made sense, made money, uh, made you know was popular, made made sense on a cultural level, all this kind of stuff. Well, now that they're continuing to crank out that same stuff, they're using an, a, a formula and an equation that doesn't work in modern culture, and they're finding that to be true, which is why they're recycling old garbage that they already have and just well, re... They're mining they're polishing previous the goodwill as well. Right, exactly. And I go, rather than just work... What they need to do, if they really wanted to, like, hey... Like, on a CEO, if, like, I became the CEO of Disney randomly tomorrow, like, you would you would literally go, when, here's what we're going to do. I was very sorry to hear about the death of my good friend Bob, who died when his car exploded on him tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but my point is, by order of the Peaky Blinders, no, uh, is that uh, the... The, the first thing I would do is say, okay, all writers, everything else... Are you, fired. Yes. You, would you say all because that feels too you, but, simple, but okay, I'm also sure. like... I don't then know that I do could a think marching of, order I don't status. know that I could think of one okay, to so, save. Okay, so let's do it this way. Let's do a marching order status. Okay, I'm going to sit in my office, and each writer's going to come in and give me a genuinely original idea. Their own. Something from their own heart that they're like, I really am passionate about this, and we've never done it. Great. See that alone. I that's that alone. I'm like, why would you not do that? Yeah. Why that's isn't the that? What, why isn't that what you're doing? <laughs> Again, passion. <laughs> passion, mother. Do you have it? <laughs> I feel like that needs to be the new meme format for literally any obvious question. <laughs> it's just like seriously. Do you have an ounce of passion in your life? Well, and you can't. Do blame you care that. about anything? You can't blame the. What was it that we were using that was a little uh, bit more shocking? The revolver, I mean, I've survived the longest with the revolver, but I'm not sure that it means I've gotten close. You don't actually have to literally get close. <laughs> I've survived the longest with the revolver. Guns, <laughs> guns are fun because they are long range. You don't have to be near the guy to hit him. Um, no, that is, that is what I would do. It's just you have to return to the, the frontier. If I can say it that way, you cannot yeah. in an in a, in an industry. That one of my, so my buddy that was the former vice president of eBay was a massive uh. business cowboy. He would tell you the number one way to kill a business is to do the same thing repeatedly. You that just kills a business. You you have to keep. It's true in a, on a psychological level too that culture requires that you are constantly adapting because a stagnant system will eventually just metastasize. Well, because, yeah, culture does not stagnate. Right. So if you are stagnant, you are being left behind. So anyway, the bottom line is secret sauce is only secret sauce until uh, well, it's not. Well, I thought I was going to say we get to you the You ought to reevaluate your soup. <sighs> okay. Were you hoping to end on that aphorism? 